Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We're glad that you did that. If this is your first time, welcome. My name is Dion and I have the privilege of sharing this message with you. Before we get started, I want to give a massive shout out to Paul and Marinette, our lead pastors. Thank you so much for leading us consistently in loving God and loving people. And we appreciate you and the boys, Seth and Nathan, legends. You guys are next level. Thank you so much. Well, you don't have to look far and wide and to realize that our, our world is facing trouble times. We are facing overwhelming moments. And what that does for us, it, our human response is that it raises lots of questions. Questions that, that might not be helpful in the season, but they're real questions. Like, uh, why? Why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? Why me? How do I deal with this? Well, what's the way forward? And, you know, these questions are real and, and we feel them, uh, but some of them aren't helpful. And what I mean by that is, I, I remember as a child, you know, uh, I would hurt myself, stub my toe and be like, why? Or I hurt myself, knock my head, go to my dad and go, dad, I knocked my head. And, and he'd go, why would you do something like that? And, you know, I, would, I wouldn't know how to answer that question. I, I would just be like, uh, and, I, and I catch myself doing the same thing to my son's eye. You know, he falls on the trampoline, crying, comes running to me. Daddy, I fell on the trampoline. And, and my first response is, why would you do something like that? And I see the confusion in his eyes. And, and, and a better question would be like, how, how can I help you? Where did you hurt yourself? Uh, let's see what we can do. Can you move your, you know, questions that are actually helpful. I don't think we ever have to be scared of questions because they help us evaluate situations. They help us grow. But there are some questions that are just not helpful. And those questions can sometimes take us off the track and take us away from God's plan for our lives. And so I really want to talk about that. I've also been really encouraged by our church and how we've grown in the season. Love that when you look around at what's happening. Just this online service that we're doing right now is a privilege that we get to do and do it so well. And then you think about our small groups growing online. Growing. You think about... I think about uh, Friday nights for the youth. We think about all these different things that we're doing in the community. Zambia Project, that is, just has the favor of God on it. There's just so much to be grateful for. And you know, Jesus, just before he goes to the cross, just before he's betrayed, he speaks to his disciples because they're facing an uncertain time. At the time, the people, the nation of Israel, were expecting a savior that would will come and set them free from uh, a political system. They will come and set them free from their current situations that they were less than. And Jesus comes and he, and he really brings a brand new message, a message that will change all of humanity. And they don't like that. It's uncertain. They don't know what this means. They don't understand it. But Jesus says to this to his disciples. He prepares them for the way. And let's read it together. John 16, He says, and, and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. So Jesus lets them know that, hey, it's an unbelieving world. Not everyone will believe what I've come to share with them. But for you who do, you must be courageous. Because you will face troubles. Not you might face troubles. You will. Not you might have sorrows. You will have sorrows. But be courageous. And courageous is, a, is a, an incredible word because we must understand it sometimes. Courageous doesn't mean that you ever don't ever go through hard times and face fear. But courageous is... The ability and what you know and you're motivated, motivated by something greater than your fear to overcome it. And we're motivated, this verse says we can be motivated by the fact that Jesus conquered the world. We can know that God has done everything. He's paid the price for us to overcome our sorrows and our troubles. We can overcome because we know who He is. And so really the heart of this message is that we get to know God more today. That's our prayer. Let's pray again. God, thank you so much that you're with us. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that even in these moments, God, that we can put our weight on you, we can put our trust in you, we can, we can love you. 
and have our peace, God. Father, I pray that you would use this message to, to grow us, to inspire us, to challenge some of our thinking, and to honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the title of this message is 10,000 Reasons. You know, we have so many reasons, so many reasons to be thankful and grateful for what God is doing, especially if you're part of Hope Church. So many things to be grateful for. And I, I looked up this word, this number 10,000. And normally when there's a number, it has significance in the Bible. So I wanted to see what 10,000 meant. And, and as I looked it up, uh, 10,000 was used as a number to explain that, oh, I just stopped counting. Uh, in other words, it'd be like if you woke up this morning early, you go, oh, I need to get going. I need to get ready. I need to make sure I'm good to go because I've got a gazillion things to do today. And 10,000 was used in that context. 10,000 reasons. I have this so many reasons to serve God. You might know it as a song that Matt Redman sang, and we sing it in church, 10,000 reasons for my heart to sing. And, and that's exactly what he means. It's, it's so many reasons to worship God. And David understood this. David was a psalmist. He, he wrote songs. But what I love about David, David is that he was fierce. He was brave. You know, he fought Philistines. He, he, he killed one Philistine, a giant Philistine, and he sent a whole army running. Uh, and he did that with God. And he did all these things. But in, in the same time, he was sensitive to God's voice. He, he was obedient to God's voice. Uh, he wasn't perfect. But for the most of his life, he was so obedient. And, and the, this verse that says that David is a man after God's heart. What a great way to be known. A man after God's heart. I would love to be known that way. Wouldn't you love to be known that way? Such a great thing. And so he writes a song, probably my favorite song of all time. If you know me, I would have shared the song so many times with you. But Psalm 103 is incredible. But we're going to read Psalm 103, 1 to 5. David says, Oh, my soul, bless God from head to toe. I'll bless his holy name. Oh, my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, everyone. He heals your diseases, everyone. He redeems you from hell, saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness, beauty eternal. He renews your youth. You're always young in His presence. Wow. What an incredible song. And you know, there's so many reasons that we can can learn so many things that we can learn from that scripture and I just want to take three points that I think that will encourage us uh, to understand that there are all these reasons to serve God and that is worthy of our worship the first point is this encourage your heart encourage your heart what David does in this first part of the verse is very significant he says this he says oh my soul bless God from head to toe I'll bless his holy name. Oh, my soul. He's talking to himself. And I know that sounds really weird, right? It can be like the weirdest thing to talk to yourself. But that's exactly what David says. He's saying, so, hey, bless God. Have you ever been in those moments where you're facing an overwhelming circumstance and you don't know what to do? It's in those moments that you can tell yourself, like, hey, come on. You can praise God right now. You can, you can lift him up. I'm feeling insignificant. No, no, no. I'm a child. Of God. I'm feeling weak. No, when I'm weak, he is strong. Like he was telling his soul, praise God. I love that. I absolutely love that. See, when we encourage our heart, everything starts in our heart. We need to encourage our hearts. We need to take responsibility for what's happening in our heart. There's a verse that says, guard your heart above all else. Guard your heart. Because it's the wellspring of life. And so what that means is that, that I'm not responsible for your heart. You're not responsible for my heart. We're responsible for our own hearts. And if we can learn to encourage our hearts, then we'll see the reasons. We'll have 10,000 reasons to praise Him. The next point that I want to highlight in that verse is the fact that we need to live in remembrance. Love in remembrance. I don't know about you, but I, I struggle with this. Uh, when I was younger, I, I had my head in the clouds. I'm a dreamer. I'm, I love music. I get into all those things. But 
But what that means sometimes, I forget. <laughs> it's not like I forget things, but because I'm thinking about so like different things and writing songs and lyrics and all those kind of things. Um, but when it comes into our faith and our relationship with God, this is not a good thing. We need to live in holiness. This is the way David wrote the song. He said, Oh my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, everyone. He, re he heals your diseases, everyone. He redeems you from hell, saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness, beauty eternal. Maybe even now you're remembering what God has done for you. Can I encourage you right now? Let's blow up the comments uh, where on whatever platform you're watching this. Won't you let us know, you know, what has God done for you? Has he healed you? Has he blessed you with a car? What, whatever it is, just blow up the comments. We would love to. I, I think everyone would love to see that. And it would be so, so encouraging to us all. You know, the great thing about, about remembering God is it builds our faith. And can I encourage you to do one practical thing? Start journaling writing things down every time you you know that god has done something or you recognize that he's done something for you write it down put it down i i have a journal that's just full of what god has done for me you know for my wife for my family for the fact that i'm alive uh, if i didn't know god i'd probably be in jail or, or, or dead to be honest with you but he's been so faithful and he's been so merciful and so kind to me that there's so many things that I write down. I, I don't just journal in a book, but I also take, if you know me, I take a lot of pictures. The youth will know on a Friday night, the last thing that we do, right before we go, just before 10 o'clock at night, Dion will always say, let's take a picture. And you can see some are into it and some are not. But the reason why I do that is not to, to have something on Instagram, but to actually have a record of these incredible people that serve the next generation. And I love that because only God can do something like that. Bring people from different backgrounds to serve a generation. And I love that. It speaks of God's goodness. This builds faith in us. It helps us not to forget that our God is good. Our God has a heart for people. Can I encourage you? Live in remembrance. You know, it doesn't matter how insignificant it is to you. People have opinions on your life. You will always have voices speaking into your life. But the greatest voice, the loudest voice in our life should be the voice of God. So write it down. Make a record. Live in remembrance. Another thing I would encourage you to do is to share your testimony. Share your story with others. It is, it is encouraging to others. And that's why I love small groups. Because in a small group, you get to know other people's stories. You get to share your life with them. And it encourages your faith. You get to journey together with people to serve God. I think that's incredible. If you're still not part of a small group, can't encourage you enough. Find your people. There's a small group for you. Join one right now. So the last point that we can take from this portion of scripture is don't give up. Don't give up. There's so many moments in our lives where we get overwhelmed sometimes and we're right on the verge of something happening or breakthrough. We've been going at it for long and, and because of tiredness and weariness, or because of disappointment, we, we give up. I want to encourage you, don't give up. This verse says, He renews your youth. What an incredible, He renews your youth. You're always young in His presence. I love that. I'm, I'm 47 years old. And I love that verse. I hold on to that verse all the time, particularly on a Friday night when we're just about to kick off with youth and we've had a day and I know the day's going to end at about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock that night because there's so much to do. And I'm going, God, I need your energy. I need your strength. I don't want to just be okay. I want to be the best. I want to be the loudest. I want to jump around. I want to I wanna enjoy what I do. And I know I can't, I'm not that 25-year-old or that 17 year old anymore but god comes through he's amazing that i just remember that he's with me we remember that he we're in his presence we're doing it for him and he somehow by his grace energizes and we have an incredible time but i also have another testimony you know the reason i struggled to have children for for 10 years and during the time it was a roller coaster ride um, lots of good and bad news coming at us 
And I remember after our third miscarriage, we decided that, hey, like maybe this is not for us. Maybe this was never meant for us. And the, the reality of that was so hard for us to deal with, particularly for Louise. I, it really broke my heart. And, and as a man, I felt super helpful, helpless. I felt helpless that I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about this. This was way above like anything I could do. No amount of money could solve this. I, I, I just couldn't do it. But God, in His miraculous power, we, we had these people around us that supported us and prayed for us. And I remember one time our, our church leader said, hey, what is it that you want? And, and I said, my deepest desires, our deepest desires is to, is to be parents. And we had some people that were saying, hey, it's, it's, it's probably time to give up, hey? And even us, Louise and I, were talking about um, stepping away from this option of having our own kids and, and moving into some in, in adoption and looking at different options. And, but, but this desire just wouldn't go away. And we kept going. And there it, it was this moment where we were driving down on a holiday. We took a, a, a time out from our space and we were chatting. And, and I had this question to Lou. I said, what if we never have our kids? What will we do? Will we still serve God? Will we still give Him our best? Will we still honor Him with everything that we have? And it was in those moments that we had made a decision. Like, it doesn't matter what we face from this point on. God is God. And we will love Him. And you know, we, we still went through some difficult times, but we actually experienced one of our greatest miracles. Through a lot of help, a lot of support, I'm a dad of twins, Zion and Zola, and, and some of you know them. But they are miracles. They, they're a testament of God's goodness. And now I know this story is not true for everyone. And I know you, think, you might be thinking, but that's not how it worked out for me. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying don't give up. Don't give up. God is good. He loves you. There are 10,000 reasons to serve. See, all the reasons that we have for, for praising God, for serving Him, for following Him is found in Jesus. It's found in Jesus. You see, in Jesus we are forgiven. In Jesus we are redeemed. In Jesus we are delivered from sin. We have the favor of God in us. In Jesus we have His mercy. We are a new creation. It's all in Jesus. We have 10,000 reasons to love Him, to serve Him, to follow Him. But for God, for God there's one reason. He was motivated for one reason. He was motivated by love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His Son, that whoever believes in Him would not perish, but know eternal life. And John 16 I just want to read this verse. John 17 verse 3 says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You see, we've had incredible messages by Paul and Marinette. Pray bold prayers. Let's pray bold prayers. We can trust God. He's a good Father. You can pray those bold prayers. We had Marinette sharing about, we are uncovering the lies of Satan. You have an enemy. I have, I have an enemy to our soul. You know, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That is his mission. And he lies to us. And so Ryan Ed's talk on not today, Satan, is incredible. I want to encourage you to go listen to that again. And then last week, Paul talked about that. This is not our home. We're passing through. This world as we know it is not our home. If you know God, then he's prepared a place for us to go and be with him in heaven. Eternal life. And God is motivated. He has his reason is that we would know Him. Do you know Him? Do you know Him today? Or do you know about Him? Do you know of Him? Have you heard stuff about Him? Do you know Him? I want to encourage you today. Today you can make a decision to know Him. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I tell you that's the best decision you could ever make. It's the best relationship that you can commit to. It is the most important relationship. It has to do with where you spend your eternity. I want to encourage you right now. I want to invite you to make that decision. And if you want to do that, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And all you need to do is, is echo it. You can even pause this, play it back, and pray it again. Or spend time on your own uh, outside in your room and pray this prayer. And this prayer is not about um, 
and a request. It's just saying, God, I want to make you Lord of my life. I want to serve you with my life. If you want to do that right now, let's pray. Just pray these words. God, thank you so much that you love me. Thank you that you gave Jesus to die for my sin. God, today I want to give you my life. I want to follow you. God, there's so many reasons to do that. But the number one reason is I want to know you. I want to know the plans that you have. And I want to walk with you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Best decision, hands down. I made this decision eight when I was 18 years old. I haven't looked back. It has been the absolute central point of my life. Just want to encourage you. We want to help you. We want to help you on this journey. It's not a sprint. It's a journey with God as you get to know Him, spend time with Him. I love that when you get to know someone, you even know the tone of their voice. You know what they want or how they say it. You know when you're in trouble. All of those things. And that's what this relationship is like. It is the best relationship. Please go onto our website, www.hopechurch.org.za for more information. That's what Hope Church is all about. We want to help you as you journey. Thank you again. God bless you. You're in tune. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. We really pray that you find it helpful in your journey. And we also really want to encourage you to take your next step by signing up to join a small group or to do discovery. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share this with as many people as possible. And we really can't wait to see you next Sunday.